What is up, everybody? Have you been struggling with Ansible, getting it to work in your environment or in your home lab? Well, I'm going to make that process way easier for you using Semaphore. We're going to set up Semaphore on Portainer. So I'm assuming you've already set this up. If not, I will be making a video soon on how to get Portainer running. But if you have Docker on your Linux device with Docker Compose, you can use the same files to set it up in that environment as well. So let's get right into it. Now you can see on Semaphore's website, they actually have a set of instructions on how to install this. You'll see a, a few options that you have. You can install it via Snap, or you can install it with a package manager, but what I'm gonna choose to do is use Docker Compose. So if we scroll down, we get a, this list of a Docker Compose YAML file. So what we can do is copy that. We're gonna go over to our Portainer instance, and I've actually created a custom template for this and just pasted this uh, content in here. There's a couple of values that you'll need to change. These values are the following, and you'll also need to create your encryption key um, using this command here. And we can do that simply using any Linux box that you have in your environment, or if you have this uh, feature in your terminal as well. And you'll notice that your MySQL password and your database password need to match. And I have shown that here by naming it the same as change me one. It can be a bit confusing, especially if you scroll down and you see the LDAP section. If you're not using LDAP, you don't have to worry about 43 to 50. As you'll notice here, it's notated as no to activate LDAP. So let's just ignore that section. Let's scroll up and let's just create some very difficult passwords here. And we're gonna match these two here. And then you'll see an admin password. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I wouldn't recommend this. By all means, make sure your SQL password is completely different from your admin password and stored in a safe location. Now the last thing we need is to create this encryption key using that command that we found on their website. For this, I'm just gonna jump into a random Linux machine that I have so that I can get this encryption key. So we're just gonna go to my Unify controller hosted on Ubuntu. We're gonna sign in and we're gonna copy that command that was listed. Head taxi32 slash dev slash urandom with a pipe of base64. If we do that, it generates us a base64 encryption key and we can simply just copy this and paste it into our Docker Compose file right here. Now one thing I forgot to mention that could be a little confusing on my end is I had those uh, quotation marks around the passwords and the encryption key, but make sure you remove those so it's just the string. You'll see here that I have removed those quotation marks here on, a, on my encryption key and up here at the top. So just make sure that you don't have that in your uh, Docker Compose file so you don't run into any issues. If you do and you deploy the stack, you will notice that your logs will probably show an access denied authentication error to your MySQL. So this looks good. And also one thing that I did was change this to port 3001 to be exposed instead of 3000. And we want it to be 3001 exposed to me using 3000 on the box. So at this point, we are ready to compose this. I'm gonna label this as Semaphore 2 only because I have a Semaphore in my environment already. And we're gonna hit update the template. And then within this template, I can deploy the stack. One thing you can also do is just copy this Docker Compose file you've created, go to stacks, add a stack. We can name it Semaphore 2, and then we can paste it in here. And this is typically how I go about doing things. I just didn't wanna edit the original stack that I was working on. So at this point, we can scroll down and hit deploy the stack. So now we'll wait. Okay, you can see the stack was successfully deployed. If we go to containers, let's make sure that it's running. You'll see that it's running on port 3001. I like to jump into the logs and just verify that it can connect. And you'll see 
that it's starting to execute this migration process, which means it's running. And it shows that the server is running. So let's make sure we can access this. And we can. So you'll notice that I'm on port 3001. I'm going to use admin as my username, unless you've changed this in your compose file. And then we're going to use the password that I set up. And you notice we're in. So we're going to create a project name. We're just going to call this YouTube. And we'll hit Create. Now this part can be a little bit confusing and took me some time to understand. However, we're going to be creating SSH keys into our machines to make this the most convenient way possible. It can get a little bit complicated with having different users and different keys that you need to store. We're going to create a user on each server um, named DevOps. And I'm going to take you through that process and we're going to install those SSH keys. So if we jump back over into our Portainer instance, let's go into the console of our Sema42 server. And let's change this over to bin sh and hit connect. Now you'll notice we're connected and I'm logged in as the Sema4 user. What we're going to do at this point is create an SSH key. We're going to generate this key so that we can import the public key on all of our systems in our home lab. To do this, we're going to do ssh-keygen dash t r s a and you can call this whatever you want i'm just going to call this devops hit enter no passphrase for me you can if you'd like no passphrase and you'll notice that we've generated an ssh key if we ls into our home directory you'll see that we have a public key in there and if we add the tac lat command onto our ls you'll see that our private key is in here as well. Perfect. So let's let's talk about the process of importing this key into another server. Now I've already done this for my other Semaphore instance, so we're just going to use one server for example. And I like to do everything from the original host, just because when you SSH to a machine from, from a Linux machine, it will add that host fingerprint into the known host file. And this is something that's just good to have um, in case you run into any issues. And this is something that I've run into um, when trying to toy with Ansible, is that it needs to be a part of the known host file. But the first thing we need to do is actually get a, the value of our public key. So if I do cat devops.pub, I'm gonna actually copy this key and we're gonna put it into a notepad. But before we do that, let's put a couple parameters on this. We're going to do echo, open quotation, paste, close quotation. And then at the end of this, we're going to do greater, greater, slash home, slash DevOps, dot SSH. That's our hidden SSH folder. And then we're going to throw it into authorized underscore keys. Now this command we can copy and we can paste after we SSH into all of our machines. So let's just copy that. Now let's jump back over to our terminal and we're going to SSH into your Linux machine. In my case, I'm going to use the user core at 10.0.10.254. It's going to ask about the fingerprint and this is what I was referencing. So you want to say yes to that fingerprint. You'll notice that it was added to your list of known hosts. Perfect. Now put in the password for that SSH user. OK, we're signed in. You can see that I've added a few things to this notepad. When you SSH into your box, there's, there's going to be a series of commands that you're going to need to run. You're going to need to run sudo tech i to become root user if you're not root on SSH. So let's run sudo dash i, enter the password for the user you're logged into, and now we're root. The next command you're going to need to run is going to be adding your user. Now the tac m tac s, this is so that we create a home directory. This home directory is needed so that the SSH key can be stored on that user. And then the dash s is just for the uh, type of terminal that you want the user to have. I have already run this, but you're just going to do user add dash m dash s slash bin slash bash, and then the name of your user. 
in my case is DevOps. Next thing you want to do is change the password for your account that you just created. And then you're going to type your password in twice. Once you've got that, you're going to just copy that echo command that you created and you're going to paste it. Hit enter. And now your SSH key is on this account. Now let's just hit exit, type exit again. And now we're out of this system. Okay, so we've got a system set up. Perfect. If you have other home systems, just run through that same process until you've got your SSH keys on all of your machines. We're gonna jump back into Ansible, Semaphore, and there's a few things that we're gonna to need to do. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the key store. Now we're gonna set up our SSH key and we're also gonna create a credential with none so that we can use that in setting up our repo to GitHub. So let's hit new key. Let's just start with none. And then type is gonna be none. You'll, you'll notice it mentions this is the type of key for HH, HTTPS repos and for playbooks which use non-SSH connections. So that's done. Then we're gonna create our SSH key. I'm gonna title this SSH, SSH key. And then the username, in my case, is DevOps. Now we're gonna grab the private key from what we generated on our Ansible instance. So back into the bash terminal, we're gonna ls in here, and you can see here's our private key, so we'll just do a cat on DevOps, and here's the beginning of my private key and the end of it. Let's copy that, and let's paste it. Hit create, and now your SSH key is set up, and that's all you'll need to do as long as you're using SSH keys to all of your server, especially the same key. Next, we're gonna be creating our repo to my GitHub instance. So let's go to repos. Let's click new repo, and we're gonna name this GitHub. Now let's copy the path of my GitHub. This is a public GitHub, so I don't need to authenticate to it. We're gonna use the main branch, and we're gonna use the none key that we set up. Okay, so now our GitHub repo is set up, so we have playbooks that we can use, and we've also set up our SSH key. The next thing we need to do is create an environment. I'm just gonna name this all, and we're just gonna use open and close brackets. We're not gonna define any variables inside of this JSON format. We're just going to be creating a blank environment. And the reason we have to do this is because when you create the task templates, you have to specify an environment. And so we're just gonna create that blank. Next, we're gonna go to inventory. Inside of this inventory, you can name it whatever you'd like. We can just say home lab in this instance. The user credentials are going to be my SSH credentials. The pseudo credentials, we don't need any. And then we're going to create a static file where we're just going to say home lab. And this is in the INI configuration. So this is the title of the group that you're creating. And we're just going to put in the IP address to the server that I set up. You can also categorize things if you do web servers. And then you could put IPs down here, but we're not going to do that. Let's hit create. And now our home lab is set up as our inventory file. The last thing we will need to do is create the task template. Now these can be very confusing, but if you're just a home user like me, you're probably not going to be playing with a bunch of these options. So in this instance, we're just going to set an apt update command to go to our home servers. So let's just name it apt update update apt packages and then the playbook file name is going to be the file name from your repo that you added and you can see that i've got a playbook update dash apt dash packages dot yaml and i've also got an apt install kimu and that's for my kimu agent that i need to have on my proxmox servers so if we just copy this name since we've set the path to this we can just copy the name of that file come back into here and we're good to go. Specify our inventory file, which is home lab. Specify our repository, and then specify your environment. Now you don't want to put in a vault password since you're using the SSH key. So let's create that task. Now, we are ready to run this. So let's click run, and let's just do a dry run so that it checks to make sure everything's okay. You see that it started, and now it's gonna gather the facts. Can it sign into the machine? And it can. 
And so you'll notice here that our SSH key is working properly. We can get to the machine. It was able to perform the check on the apt update and everything's okay. It wasn't unreachable and it didn't fail. So what we could do is close this, run it, and don't check anything. Let's just do update server. And let's run it. So without that dry run checked, this is actually going to perform the apt update command on that server. Now this makes life so much more simple as I'm a home user with multiple Linux machines in my environment. And I don't wanna to have to deal with keeping those servers up to date every single day and not sleeping at night. So this is a great way that I can just log into my Semaphore dashboard and run an apt update package to make sure everything is nice and secure. Now you'll see here that everything was okay. You'll notice nothing was changed, so my server's already up to date. But that's how you set up Semaphore. Now I know this was a very quick and simple tutorial, but I just wanted to take you guys through the process of setting this up with SSH keys, as there's not a lot of information out there on how to do that, and you'll be jumping through forums and forums and forums just to learn how to do this in Linux, and the hurdles that I came through when I was setting this up as well. I just want to say thank you guys for watching this content. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below. I just want to say thank you for watching and taking time out of your day to support me. And hopefully you've learned something from this video that you can take into your own home lab. And just keep everything up to date nice and clean without having to worry. And just make your life easier because that's what we're here for. Have a good one and I will see you guys on the next video. Oh, 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 oh,